This video is about Chris Skye. According to Wikipedia, Chris Sakosha, his real name, is the son of Vaughn developer Art Sakosha, who owns Sky Homes Corporation. They build residences in Kleinberg and Mississauga. Chris is listed as the vice president of the company, and in 2020, the company said that he is not responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the company, nor does he implement any procedural protocols, and that his opinions, comments, and actions are not condoned by the corporation. Chris lives in King City with his wife, Jennifer Sakosha. Now, I don't know very much about Jennifer. However, she's from Katy, Texas, and they were married in 2014. That's all I know about her, really. The London Police Fundraiser. Chris Sakosha was originally asking for $250,000 in support of the London Police because he claimed that they are going to see the government and end any of the coercive mandates. Now, the London police put out a, a Twitter post saying that they were not supporting this fundraiser. The LPS is aware of social media posts advertising an event and attempting to fundraise using our crest and pretending to be LPS supported. This is not true. If you don't see it on our verified social media accounts, be wary. Oh, and the address that he's actually having people mail, mail the money to is Sky Homes. That's awfully suspicious. Mad. Mothers Against Distancing. It's a group that Chris, Jenny, and Kellyanne Wolf started. I don't believe that she is their ex-friend, though. I think they are still friends. Mad is a not-for-profit corporation registered with the Government of Canada that claims to be a group of parents and teachers looking out for the safety of Canadian children. They believe the schools are unsafe and they use the group to fundraise money for another one of Chris's schemes, Private On Demand Education Incorporated, which is not actually a registered corporation. I'm going to be referring to it as POD from now on. POD claims to be a registered private school that will implement the North American Montessori curriculum. For a $250 down payment and $200 a month, your child can learn in a safe environment by a qualified educator, so they claim. Now, they boast 50-plus students, 10-plus teachers, and 7-plus spaces. As I said, it's not a registered corporation, and as of October 2021, no location is announced, according to this article. Now, it's November 17th, 2021. I'm filming this video and still crickets. The social media account. So, Chris, I guess, claims to have cracked the code and that he only needs a few thousand dollars to pay lawyers. So, there is no social media platform that anybody can verify because there is no logo, screenshot, app, or even a name for this secret social media platform. But back to work. So, the website is no longer available for this initiative. And last year, Sakosha promised to provide legal funding aid to any business in our network that requires it. And the way you become a part of the network is by donating a minimum of $100 that will allow you to tap into this legal fund in the event that your small business is affected by any of these coercive mandates. Don't worry, Chris has got you covered. His original goal was to raise $500,000 for Back to Work, but, that, uh, but when the GoFundMe launched it, it was reduced to a more reasonable $25,000. Well, another day, another scheme. Well put, Platypus. Jam the airport. So Chris was consistently promoting throughout late October to jam the airport, and in particular Pearson Airport, and pretty much any airport all across Canada. What he had done is he had promoted people who were at Nathan Phillips Square at a different event to start up a convoy of cars and uh, be at the airport by around 3 p.m. and drive very slowly. That would just, in all honesty, piss off a ton of passengers and it wouldn't really stop air traffic. He was under the impression he had said that Stopping air traffic would teach these corporations a lesson financially. The cost of business for pharma companies 
they basically pay their way through lawsuits. So paying fines is just simply the cost of business to, to these entities. Excuse me. In the Nanaimo, BC, Chris had one of his greatest freakouts ever. Actually, the greatest freakout ever, to say the least. A few of Eric's other greatest hits include the commentary while he gives Chris Guy is having his mental breakdown at his rally in Nanaimo, BC, and the one where he explains Chris does not share any money made from merchandise with anyone else on his team. Eric also claims that all the money made from the merchandise is going into Chris's pockets, which is something that anybody shouldn't be surprised about. Um, Eric is, uh, he goes by Eric Hearn, as in Eric Hearn Media. I don't know anything about him, to be honest with you, other than what I just said. Here's a video with a title that's pretty self-explanatory for the intentions. And this is another person I want to credit where I've got a lot of information from. What's truth? Thank you very much for what you've done. So, in between um, 18 minutes and 47 seconds to 22 minutes and 47 seconds, you should watch this video here. That'll be in the description. And that's where you can see Chris's greatest freakout ever in the Nanaimo, BC. So I'm going to conclude this with a few thoughts of my own here is that I've met Chris before and I got to, I got to look at his back and on his back there's a tattoo of the Lions logo as in the Lion Canada whose frontman is Lamont Daigle and the next video I'll be doing will be about the Lion as well as Lamont Daigle. So I just want to thank again the platypus and I want to thank what's truth and I'm going to leave with this piece of advice here is that control ops do out other control ops but bear in mind it's all one just big psyop.